Hello everyone, welcome to another JR How To Basic video. Today's basic video is going to explain the XBus functionality of the Servo. Now XBus is a much better way for the communication protocol on JR Servos. Pretty much everybody that runs it reports that the responsiveness of the Servos is, is improved, the centering is improved, and after switching all of my models to uh, XBus, I can confidently say that it is the way to go forward. So in this video, I'm going to show you real quick how to set up XBus ID on the servo and a couple of the other functions. If you don't have an XBus servo programmer, you can do it through the JR transmitters. That's the T14, the T44, the Matrix, and the Elite. However, I would really recommend you get this XBus programmer. It makes things a lot simpler when it comes to servo setup. Plus, you need this to sync aileron servos if you would like to do the servo sync. The 2K sync for running uh, two aileron servos on the same surface, or two elevator servos, or two rudder servos, that's a really nice feature, and it matches across a lot of points, which makes the, uh, the servos basically perfectly match to each other, so they don't ever fight each other. The link to that video is down in the description if you would like to view it. Okay, on the Xbus servo programmer, you can plug your servo into either one of these ports, one or two, but these are the only two ports on the unit, so one I usually plug my power into. You can plug all the way up to a three cell LiPo directly into this, provided your servos can handle the voltage. There are some JR servos that are rated to handle 3S LiPo directly. If you're not sure, please look up the manual or the specs on the DeForce website. Okay, so we have the servo plugged in and we have a battery plugged in and the servo is dead still. So it has not seen its servo ID. So they go into a limp mode when there's no ID that they can see. So we got to change the servo ID on the Xbus programmer. Now, in order to find what ID the servo is programmed to, you will need to click the left key here until the cursor is blinking on the left side and then push the up key and now you'll see that the cursor is blinking on the ID number. Now if you roll this dial you can see that the ID number changes. Now if you roll it all the way back counterclockwise you'll notice it goes to this scan mode in this mode, you can locate the servo's ID because it will scan for it. And you can push any key to start. And it will start scanning until it locates the servo ID and then it'll jump out. And now the servo is live, so I can't bend this anymore. And you'll notice it's giving you some position data on the screen. So in order to select the, the pulse width here, just click on the right hand key and this will put the cursor over to here and you can move this and as you can see the servo is moving now if you want to take big jumps push and hold this key and roll the dial and you'll notice that the servo moves a whole lot more and instead of moving one step at a time pushing this button and turning the dial moves it ten steps at a time Now 1500 is considered center. So if you want to center your servos, put it to 1500. Now, you'll notice that the servo ID is 09-1. This servo has already been programmed prior to this. Now the reason I'm trying to show you how to use the scan mode on the Xbus servo programmer is because that's where you're gonna start every time you go to program a servo. A lot of times you're not gonna change the servo ID you just want to find what the servo ID is so that you can go in and change settings on the servo. So this is a very handy feature for locating the servo ID. Now make sure you only have one plugged in at a time because if you have multiple servos plugged in, the servo programmer is going to get confused and it won't find it. So only do one servo at a time with this. Okay, 
So, and you'll notice that these are basically navigation keys. So clicking on the right, moves the cursor right. Clicking on the left, moves it back to the left. Clicking up, moves it up. And clicking down, moves it down. So while you're in this menu, the cursor is on this menu over here, you can change the function of this menu. In order to go to the different menus, you need to have the cursor on this menu. This menu's position, the next one servo ID, sub ID, and so on and so forth. Okay, so to change the servo's ID, make sure the cursor is highlighted this menu in the bottom left, and turn the wheel here until you get to servo ID menu. Now right now it's set at nine, so we're gonna click the right key, and you'll notice that the cursor highlights the nine. And let's go ahead and set it back to one. And in order to save that, click on the left key here, and it will save it, and you'll notice the ID at the top changed. The default servo ID for all JR servos is 01-1. To change the sub ID, make sure the cursor is on the bottom left here, and roll the dial until you get to sub ID. Now sub ID is for setting slave servos. So let's say you have 1-1 for your master servo. That would be like the inside servo on an aileron and you want a slave servo to that for the outside aileron servo. So you would change that sub ID to two. And again, see up here on the programmer, it now changes the sub ID. So the zero one is the servo ID and the dash two is the sub ID. So just a few other menus that you'll probably want to pay attention to. Uh, the version number and the model number. If you are syncing two servos together using the 2K sync function, these numbers need to match on both servos. If you have a mismatch, you'll need to reach out to DeForce and they can correct the issue for you. Uh, reverse does exactly what it says. It reverses the direction of the servo. The neutral point is for setting the center of the servo. So for example, we can set the arm back to neutral. And just like if you were to do sub trim on your transmitter, you really don't want a high number. So this high number of 469 is extremely high and you're actually going to be eating into uh, the travel on one, rain, one end of the servo basically. So you want this number to be as close to zero as possible. Okay, other menus, uh, holding, damping, dead band, and boost, and alarm level, we won't talk about that in this video. That'll be an upcoming video. Uh, the angle, the angle is basically how many degrees the servo arm will move. So default is 120 degrees, so that's 60 degrees in this direction and 60 degrees in this direction. And in order to run the shortest servo horn possible, you may want to increase that to 150. So that will do 75 degrees in both directions, which gives you a longer sweep on the servo, which improves the servo's position, uh, basically the centering of the servo, and also uh, reduces the amount of work the servo has to do because you're using a shorter lever. So you have the option of 120, 180, that's good for like retract functions, and 150. And slow start. Slow start is basically when power is applied to the servo. Will it immediately try to go to center or will it slowly come back to center? And slow start is what I have enabled on everything. And stop mode is basically if the, uh, the servo loses its ID, will it try to hold its position or will it just go limp? Ideally you want it to go limp, so leave it at free. Now the last two menus are interp mode, which not important, and synchro mode, which you're only gonna use that if you're syncing two servos. Okay, here is a basic 
uh, roadmap for setting up Servo ID on Xbus. So this is what I use for everything to keep it all uh, kosher basically between all my setups so all my setups are exactly the same on all of my airplanes. If uh, you just have a 50cc model where you're only using uh, six or seven functions basically you would just emit these left and right aileron two. You don't have to pay attention to either of these two. But I'll go ahead and leave this up on the screen for a little bit longer so you can screenshot it. I keep a copy of this on my phone for quick reference whenever I'm setting up a model. Now if you're doing uh, the Xbus 2K Sync, uh, please check out my other video on how to do the 2K Sync because it's going to have a little bit different roadmap than this. This this whole servo ID menu you can basically think of like if you were not going to do the 2K Sync. This is what you would use. So if you're in the process of setting up your model, uh, basically just ignore the left and right aileron functions. Okay, so the last little bit I wanted to talk about was basically uh, just give you an example of how to set servo ID for, let's just say we're going to set the left aileron ID, so 05. So on the programmer, go ahead and go to the scan mode to locate the servo ID. So it found it right away, it's set to 1. So we're going to go down to position and we're going to locate servo ID. It's actually the very next menu. We're going to change the servo ID to 5. And click on the left key to save it. And see up here it's now set to 5. So just as a quick example here with the 613 receiver, we have the green light which means the Xbus mode is on. We're plugged into the Xbus port. The servo is set to aileron. So on the aileron, let's see how it works as the aileron. Okay, and as one more real quick example, we'll go ahead and set this to function as an elevator. So servo ID 3. So click up till servo ID is highlighted. Turn the wheel counterclockwise to go to scan mode. Tap any key to start. And see it found the servo ID is servo ID 5 which is set to aileron right now. So we will quickly go down and set the servo ID to 3, which matches up with the elevator. And we'll click this to save it. So now the servo ID is set and plugged back into the receiver. And now it works as an elevator servo. So hopefully this video was helpful to those who are a little bit confused about how to set servo ID and all that. If you got any questions, please let me know down in the comments or you can message me on Facebook and Instagram or you can ask any one of the other uh, Team JR pilots. We'd all be more than happy to help you out. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.